Hello and thanks for using Super Control. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can add and edit your general details and it is important that you add this information because it forms the basis for how your account is going to function going forward and it also allows you to ensure that you've got all of your contact details and business information added as required. And also within your general details section you've got multiple options for customization of your booking and inquiry forms and this allows you to change what the guest can see and enter during this process. So it's crucial to complete this information in full because these are the details that your guest will see on their booking summaries. It also helps the client care team to identify your account and to contact you using the details that you provide. So let's get into it. So as you can see here, we're already on the general details page. And to get to this page, you head to admin and general details. The first section that you see here is the contact details area. And this is where you can enter all of your business information. And these are details that are going to be used for correspondence to guests. They're going to appear on the booking form. And it's important that you keep this information accurate so that communication between yourself and the guests is as smooth and easy as possible. So keeping this information up to date and relevant is a priority. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there's an email address field here and you can add your contact email address in this field. Booking alerts will be emailed to this address and it will also show on booking confirmations that your guests receive. So this is the email address that guests will use to contact you. Now the next field we have here is additional email addresses. So you can also add in another address that you would like to receive a copy of a booking alert. And this could be important, for example, if you've got more than one person who manages bookings and if they benefit from a booking alert and they don't have access to the main email address, then you can enter theirs in here. And if there's more than one, you can separate them using a comma. So you'll see a bit further down, you've got your VAT information. So this is only really relevant if you are VAT registered. But this is where you can enter your default settings. And you do also have to set it up per property. But for more information on that, please see our property setup video. If you are VAT registered, then it's important to populate this information to ensure that VAT is correctly broken down within a booking. So if you scroll down to setup options, you can set things up like your currency for the account. You can choose to send booking alerts via text to yourself. You can also choose to enable a read receipt for your booking summary. And you can also choose which calendar is used on a mobile device. Now we recommend the property selector. You just choose a property and then you can choose your dates and make a booking. But there are a few more to choose from there. You can also choose when your price planner start year is from. So as a default, it's 2019, but for example, if you didn't want to start selling dates until 2020, you could select that from the drop-down. So if you scroll down the page, you'll see we reach the payment options section. So this is where you can select which payment method you provide. And you may see the common card types here are greyed out. Now this is because you don't have a payment processor. For more information on payment processors, you can visit our help center well, there is actually another video called Choosing Your Payment Solution, and you can watch that for more information. So to enable any of these payment processor options, you can just choose the tick box here. And then you've got the Show to Public option here. So this means that this option will be shown on your booking form for the guests to be able to choose as a method of payment. So if you didn't have this tick, then it would still show as a method for you to take payment manually through the admin portal of your account, but it wouldn't be shown to the guest. So if you've got sort of legacy customers who still pay by check or cash, for example, then you could still offer that as a payment. It just wouldn't be shown at the front end sort of guest portal. So it's really important to add in these payment options early just to make the whole sort of guest experience as smooth and easy as possible and to ensure that you're fully set up to take payments and there's not going to be any issues around that. If you scroll down, you'll see that you can select PayPal as a payment processor. All you need to do is enter your details here, and then PayPal will appear as an option on the payment method list. 
So next you will see the system settings section. So this is where you can set up options such as showing a payment link that you can send out with booking auto responses and letters, which will allow the guests to pay easily. You can also choose to give the guests access to information on reducing the holiday carbon footprint by adding in the climate care links. If you have chosen SagePay as a payment processor, you could choose to send yourself a receipt every time you get a payment. And you can also send these to any additional email addresses that you may have entered previously. Next up, we've got the property photos section. And this is where you can choose at what resolution your photos are uploaded. We recommend using the resolution of your largest photo for these settings. You can also choose what size your thumbnails will display at within your account. And these will appear on booking and inquiry forms. Next, we move on to website booking form options. These are settings that enable you to modify what information you request from the guest at the time of booking. You can add an arrival and departure time field so that the guests can enter their preferred time of arrival. This is useful when setting up a property ready for a changeover. Without this field, the guests would need to adhere to the time stated on your booking form, or they could contact you separately to request a different time. You can also include a company field, which is useful if you've got a lot of business customers, because it means that their company name will be shown at the top of the invoice. Some clients like to collect information about their guests for various reasons. And if you click on collect guest names, gender and age, you'll then be presented with further options and you can choose to show a gender dropdown. So you're requesting the gender of the guest, the age. And you can also choose to show guest ages of over 18 years. Then you can choose to collect guest names on the guest login and the booking form. And you can also put a little description as to why you're requesting that information. And this description will be shown on the booking form in the same area where they enter all of their guest information. Next up, we've got admin booking form options where you can add booking sources, for example, where the booking interest originated. And you can also add in a rating which allow you to categorize guests. So for example, blacklisting or repeat guests, loyal guests would be a good example of ratings that you could add. And to do this, you just go to bookings and then customer ratings. And it's very simple to add these. And next up we have the website inquiry form options section where you can modify the inquiry form that is shown to a potential guest. So here you choose to display only the group name on the inquiry form instead of individual property names. You can choose to show a brochure request. So if this is ticked, it will show a brochure request on the inquiry form. And this is only for postal brochures. You can also tick if you would like to show the booking source, so how the guest heard about you. We recommend that you do because if you are paying to advertise or list your property on a channel like booking.com or send out a marketing email, you can see how effective your campaign has been. The data can be used in a report within the statistics menu under customer booking sources. You can also choose when your PDF quotes expire that you send to the guest and you can also add a little bit of text so if a guest tries to access a quote after it's expired, then this text will show. And next we've got the admin inquiry form options. So this is how you can customize the admin inquiry form. So that's the form that you would use to add an inquiry on behalf of a guest. For example, if you've got them on the phone and you've got similar options here to your admin booking form, you can choose to require a rating value and require a source value. And if you've got multiple websites within your account, so maybe different properties on different sites, then you can choose which site this inquiry should be associated with. You can also choose the number of photos to show in a quote that is sent to the guest. We can have any number up to six here. We recommend keeping it simple because each quote contains a link that will take the guest through to your website, to the property page, and they'll be able to look at all information, all photos, descriptions, amenities, etc., on the site. And finally, we have email addresses for automatic filing. So this section allows you to save a copy of any emails that you send to your guests to their booking history and super control. This is useful because it keeps the email trail between you and the customer in one place. For more information, please see the guide on automatic filing in our help center. So that concludes today's video. So you will now know how you can add and edit your general details. You'll be able to enter all your contact information choose your payment options and you can customize your booking and inquiry forms. So thanks for joining me and we'll see you on the next video.